family welcome back to my channel if it's your first time here my name is Yannick so today this video is all about waist beads about the history of waist beads why we wear them the customs and the traditions and the reason why this video is about waist beads is because I've just started a business venture where I make waist beads um, with crystals and certain spiritual charms um, certain colors for different purposes um, I came across waist beads um, a few years back now and when I came across them I totally felt kind of drawn to them I felt connected with them I felt like this was a part of who I am it's part of my customs a part of my tradition um, so I started to make them for myself and I started to wear them so whenever I wear them a lot of people usually ask me where I get them from what do they mean blah 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 so um, I decided to start making them um, also my love for crystals you guys know I've spoke about crystals on my channel before but I want to do a separate video where it's like at a, at a beginner's level for people to understand crystals how they work and their use and I'll link that with this video so you can see how the two tie in so I started to make waist beads with crystals um, that's for specific purpose um, and specific use so I'm going to explore in this video further just to give you more information about the background of waist beads um, you know what what's their purpose where their origin where they originate from and stuff like that um, a lot of things we see now that's surfacing on the internet a lot of people tend to say oh this is very new age or you know all of that and a lot of it is from ancient practices and customs and traditions you know like people start coming out with all the piercings like even the septum piercings and the um what do you call that um where you stretch the ear and certain tribal tattoos and stuff like that these are all stemming back to ancient you know tribes customs and practices and a lot of people are calling it new age there's nothing that's new age as they say there's nothing new under the sun you know it might be new to us because it's new information that's been surfacing on the internet that we've just stumbled across but it's very much old traditions practices customs and if you do a little bit of research and you know look back in history you'll see what it was for originally and that it's just been recycled and you know it's coming around again in this era so enough of me rambling let's get into um the history of waist beads so waist beads is a traditional african accessory and they are worn for many different reasons which i'm going to explore in this um, mostly you know to em embody your femininity and sensuality um, they're small glass beads they come in different shapes colors um, they can also you know you can also add charms to them crystals um, and they're worn for many 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 reasons so I'm going to get into some of the reasons why we you know why waist beads are worn so number one waist beads are kind of worn for shaping um, you know a woman can wear waist beads you can wear as many of them as, as you want and it kind of helps to accentuate your waistline um, because the beads they're they're traditionally worn with a non-stretchy string so you measure your mate your waist and you wear the beads and you know um, it can help you as like a positive sense of weight control to um, let you be aware of you know the size of your waist for instance my waist beads um, they tighten and they loose right throughout the day they tighten and they loosen right throughout the month you know like when um, I eat Sometimes they can feel a little bit tight so I can know like, okay, I need to stop eating now. Or um, sometimes I wake up in the morning and they drop all the way down to my waist. I'm like, wow, you know, my belly's gone really flat. Or sometimes um, maybe it's if it's close to my time of the month, they become really tight. So I'm aware that, you know, when my belly's expanding and um, shrinking and stuff like that. So they're traditionally used for like shaping. Um, just like how back in the days people would use a corset for shaping. So um, traditionally they're used for shaping and just to bring awareness of you know your your weight your weight control as it goes up and down and, and, and as it fluctuates so it's kind of like a positive um way of kind of you know keeping track of your waistline instead of you know being obsessed with scales and measuring yourself and stuff like that so it could be used for that purpose it was also used for um the purpose of uh, young girls rites of passage like for instance when a young girl will start a menstruation um you know she can um, a waist bead will be probably put onto her by someone as a, a rights into womanhood, a rights of passage into womanhood. And you know, that, that bead is sacred between her and the relationship with her and herself. And she'll keep that, you know, d discreet under her clothes where she wouldn't be showing that to boys or any or anyone. And you know, as she grow, they can change it and so forth. So since I've been making waist beads, a lot of women always say, oh, you know, I'm too fat for this, or I'm too big when I get small. Waist beads offer women of all sizes. The beads are for many different reasons. There's so many reasons you can use waist beads for. For instance, um, 
people used to use waist beads uh, for um, if they're trying to conceive, you know, if they're infertile. The, the thing with waist beads is it's like wearing a, a wedding ring, you know, it's like a reminder of the bond between you and your partner or wearing um, a Jesus peace cross because that reminds you of your faith. So it's kind of a tool that's used, it's an accessory, but it's also like a tool that's used to kind of um, affirm and intentionally manifest. I'm gonna get further into that. So when people say, oh, I'm too big for this. Absolutely not. Your waist beads are personal between the relationship you have with yourself. Your waist beads are personal based on the reasons you 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 decide to wear them. So if if it's for fertility reason or to conceive or it's to promote um, a self love or to attract love or you're wearing them for protection or you're wearing them um, to strengthen a bond. Like for instance. Um, to strengthen a relationship between you and your partner you can wear a waist piece for that so that serves as a reminder when he sees it and you sees it that that's the purpose of that is to remind you that you're strengthening the bond just like how you wear a wedding ring just to remind you that you're married and you have a bond with your partner so there are many different reasons and also as i'm saying you can wear them again if you want to track your waist and um, some people can make them some people will make them small and say you know i'm gonna um wear them so i can get myself down to fit into them um, some people use them just to see how much they're fluctuating going up and down some people can use them for many different reasons and also you can wear as many waist beads as you like you know each with each waist bead you put on you have you might have a different reason or a different intention for wearing them and i'm going to show you some of my waist beads and some of the reasons i wear them and so forth now in these days and age we see a lot of people um having waist beads on show um, a lot of people say they're not to put on show like traditionally but I say to each their own, you know, you, you should have your own reasons why you're wearing them. Some people like them just because they look pretty and they, you know, they make them feel very feminine or they make them feel very sensual and just in tune with that kind of, you know, a feminine or sensuality or sexual side of them. So some people wear them for that, but because it's just very pretty and they look quite sexy on. Um, some people wear them for spiritual purpose. Now, my take on that is if you're wearing them just to accessorize because you think they're pretty, then that's absolutely fine. You know, you, you. It's your body, you do whatever you want with that. If, if you want to have them on show, that's completely up to you. Now, I believe if you're wearing them for a spiritual purpose or a purpose to intentionally manifest, I would say you wouldn't have them on show because then when you have them on show, you're drawing eyes to them and drawing eyes to them, you're drawing different people's energies and attention. And you might not want to do that because that's something that's sacred and personal between you and your beads and the purpose you're wearing them. Um, the reason I wear my beads is because they resonate with me on a ancestral level i feel like you know it's part of who i am i i wear them for many different reasons it depends on what i'm working on like for instance i use different colors because i'm going to give you another breakdown on on the meaning and the significance of colors you know there's a color spectrum for a reason every color has a different significance like you know yellow brings like a vibrant kind of energy to it um white brings kind of like a you know they say pure or if you're trying to manif uh, manifest or conceive um you've got green for like fertility and abundance um you've got purple for intuition you've got pink for more sensual femininity um orange um for vib vibrancy and stuff like that and you you know you've got the colors that's associated with your chakras as well like for instance if a certain chakra is out of balance you can wear beads of that color just you know to help you to do that work on that chakra so I wear beads for many different reasons. They also make me feel sexy. They also make me feel very feminine. Um, so there's many different reasons, you know, and each woman to their own reason. And again, I say, if you're using your beads to manifest, um, then you might want to, you know, keep them beneath your clothes and, you know, just between you and yourself. Um, if you're just using them for fashion, then, you know, it, it doesn't matter if, you, if other people see them or you wear them out. It's completely up to you, you know. I'm just kind of giving you like a little background info on this, but what you do as an individual, comes down to you as the person. So there's there's typically three types of beads. There's your tie-on beads. Um, these are made of string, they're not stretchy. It comes like this with um, the ends sealed so the beads won't fall off. They typically come um, at about 40 inches or 55 to 60 inches long. Um, so I'll show you further on in this video how you would fit this on yourself without um, you know, having the beads fall off. So there's a tie on string, not stre it's not stretchy. And once you put these on, it's a commitment. 
you've got stretchy string which i haven't been making i don't make the stretchy strings anymore i started out wearing stretchy string waist beads and since i've moved over to tie on i've never looked back the stretchy strings um, they can be quite tricky, quite uncomfortable, and they can pinch your skin sometimes. So I tend to stray away from that. But they are good for amateur who don't know much about waist beads or who is not fully committed to wanting to wear them all the time. Um, now, a lot of people tend to ask, you know, with these, um, are they going to be uncomfortable? They're absolutely not uncomfortable because you're not you're not trying to make them to fit you where they're going to squeeze and suffocate your waist. You make them with at least two inches of room, so you give your, yourself room to expand and um, they're totally discreet. I wear them under my clothes all the time. Half of the time, I don't even know I'm wearing these. I sleep in them, I shower in them, I wash them. When I get out of the shower, you just, you know, dab the towel around them, they'll dry, just like the rest of your body does. You wear them for as long as you feel like you need for the purpose and the intention you set for them in the first place. Then you can get rid of them and change them, which I tend to do, like, I change mine probably four to six months. If It depends, if I've, if I've, uh, put one on for a specific reason I feel like it served me its purpose I'll, I'll take it off and then I'll put other ones on and they could be for different reasons it could just be for if you feel vulnerable and you want to put one on for protection um you put one on like I've just the one I've, I'm showing you in a demonstration I've just put on this one it's with the evil eye strand it's with the evil eye bead and you know obviously being someone on YouTube and in the public eye you're always under scrutiny and you know people always can look at you with bad intentions or whatever malevolent uh, glare so you know that one is just kind of to protect you from malevolent eye the evil eye um mal de ojo as they call it so um you set your intentions and you wear your beads for whatever you feel like you're going through if you feel like you don't you want to attract abundance to you maybe you want to get one a gold strand with green adventuring that i make you know green adventuring is said to be a money crystal that attracts or if you want to promote self love self love um, um, if you're going through a bad time, a breakup, or you want to attract love to yourself, or you want to feel like you love yourself, you wear like a, a strand with maybe rose quartz on there. Um, if you want to strengthen your in intuition, you maybe wear a strand with uh, amethyst on there. So if you check my page out, I haven't actually told you my website. I'm going to drop everything in the description um, box. My website is www.ashira adornments. Ashira is my daughter's name, and adornments. So. Um, all my beads that I make, I make them with specific intention and specific purpose and I give you the crystals I use and the colours and I tell you why so you can check my Instagram page and my website and it will give you as much information as you need so you can know what you're buying and for what reason. So to sum that up, the tie-ons are for manifesting, for affirmations and they're, they're supposed to be used for spiritual purpose. Once you put those on, it's a commitment, you keep them on until it's service purpose, you can keep it on if you want or you can get rid of it. Um, I also make these strand. These strand are for more fashion, but I also incorporate, you know, the spiritual aspect. For instance, this is an amethyst strand. Um, I've made this with amethyst and moonstone, and you know, it's got different charms on it. I've got lotus charms. I've got the om. I've got anks. Um, it comes with an extension chain and a hook, so you don't have to commit to wearing this all the time. If you don't want this crystal on your body all the time, you wear it whenever you feel like you need it, then you can get rid of it. You take it off and you wear it again. And again, it's for spiritual purpose. Amethyst is, and the color purple is, you know, um, representation of your crown chakra. Amethyst and moonstone is for divine feminine wisdom. Amethyst is for intuition and, you know, all that stuff. So again, you can get this in a removable one, so you don't have to commit to wearing it all the time. Or if you want, if that's something you want to work on within yourself and you want to keep that on you all the time, then you can get it in a tie-on strand. Well, allow me just to, you know, run you through what you do when you get your tie-on waist beads. So your tie-on waist beads comes um, on a piece of string with two beads at the end, so the rest of the beads won't fall off. So first of all, you want to think about where you want to place your waist beads on you. Um, people wear them up here, um, to midriff to lower down my advice is each to their own but with tie and waist beads they're usually for spiritual purpose they're usually for intentionally manifesting they're usually there as a daily reminder of whatever you're trying to manifest or you're trying to protect or you're trying to attract so wearing these is a commitment so the key to wearing these is you want them to be comfortable on you so I wouldn't advise to wear tie your beads on up here or here, I would advise to tie them um, just above your womb. Your womb is your space of creation, it's where creation begins in a woman, and it's a space where it's the gateway to your healing. So, you want your beads to rest 
on your womb so you want to make sure that your beads rest somewhere that's comfortable because you have to remember with tie-ons once you put them on that's it that's your commitment you keep them on until you've finished using them so you want to make sure that you know when you're sleeping in them when you've got your clothes on um, when you're showering them um, you know when you sit down that they rest at a place where they're always comfortable you don't want to cut these beads off because the beads will all go flying off so you want to like pull beads down um, and measure yourself and then you want to make your knot so you want to make sure you have space you know and if that's too much space you can then pull some more beads down on either side of the string um, I'm done moving my beads up and down and now I've, I've figured out where I want my knot to be. Um, so once you put your beads on you, you want to push them back. You want to think about your intention um, of why you want to put these beads on um, while you're placing them on you. Or you can say it out loud. You can think it in your mind. You push them back and then you make your knot. You're just going to make a traditional knot. So you're just going to cross that over, bring one under and pull it tight. When you're pulling it tight, you're making sure your beads are tucked back there's no gaps as I said if there's gaps it might pinch your belly or pinch the hairs on your belly so you push them back you're gonna have to hold this knot in place if you've got someone to hold that for you preferably um, hold that so when you're making the second knot that it doesn't come loose if you've got someone to hold the first knot in place then you get them to hold it I usually do it myself so I make my string long enough so I put one in my mouth so I can keep this knot here tight and then I'll make my second one with this by just bringing it like so and that's it um, I make two more knots after that one two next step is you want to just make just cut it with the scissors And the little bit of thread that's left over, you're going to get a lighter. Let it burn and roll down. Blow it out. And then you should have something looking like that. You can burn it down as far as you want to. The key to, to lighting this bit of string is when you light it, you let it roll. Then you blow it out. And it leaves like a little a bubbly kind of um, ending where you know that won't won't come undone and once you're finished that's how you put your tie on waist bead um, you keep this waist bead on for how however long you feel you need it for until you've manifested whatever you've manifested or you've healed what you wanted to heal or you've attracted what you wanted to attract and after that you can feel free to remove it or you can keep it on if you want so that's it guys, that's all about waist beads, um, again feel free to check out my website www.ashiraadornments.com Follow me on Instagram, my business page, Ashira Adorn at Ashira Adornments. Um, if you've got any questions about waist beads or any inquiry, feel free to send me a DM and I'll be more than happy to help you or to answer your questions. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.